Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Danny Simone. This is my live Procreate class where I'm teaching dress designers how to use Procreate for their businesses. Um, tonight, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different. Typically, when I start one of these classes, I go through the basics, um, basically as if you've never used Procreate before in your life. However, I know that I have some people who have been following me for a while, have watched my videos on YouTube, my TikTok tutorials, my mini tutorials on TikTok, and they have seen um, these videos. So I've done, this is my third class, third and final class. So I just wanted to share with you that we're actually going to do it a little bit differently. Um, and tonight what I'm going to do is we're gonna jump into sketching tonight. Um, I'm basically treating you as if you already kind of know how to use Procreate a bit. I am going to go slow. Um, so just in case there's things you don't know or don't remember, but we're not going to be working off the workbook tonight. So I did not share the link to the workbook, but it's actually the same, um, workbook that we've used these last two times. So today, um, we're going to get into it, but I wanted to just remind you that because this is my last class, um, you're going to need to make sure um, to keep practicing. Watch these videos over and over again. Look at my YouTube channel. I haven't uploaded any videos in the last, I want to say two weeks or so, um, but I will be uploading again. It's just been a crazy um, past few weeks. So keep your eyes on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep using TikTok. It's not like it used to be. TikTok used to be easier to use um, and easier for people to see you. But these days, it feels like maybe I should put that effort into either my YouTube channel or Instagram. So just keep watching um, or keep an eye out. You'll see um, what I decide. So tonight, we are working on the back croquis. So I gave the um, Google Drive link to the back croquis. It is in the Procreate for Dress Designers group. Um, that group is still open, so you can check out the post I made maybe maybe like 30 minutes or so ago. It will show you um, the link to the drive. So I'm going to show you what that back croquis looks like, and then we're going to get started. So let's see. I have it here, actually. I want to remove the... This is not it. Sorry, this ain't it. <laughs> I'm already starting off crazy. All right, I'm actually going to create a canvas first, and then I'll show you what the croquis looks like, okay? So to create a canvas, what you do is you press the plus sign up here. Then you press this little um, black rectangle, so you t press that. And then you're gonna put in the numbers that you're gonna use to create the dimensions of your, cro uh, sorry, of your canvas. So I have um, 2048, 2048 pixels here by 3000. It was already there because that's my usual size um, canvas to use. You press create and now you've got a canvas that looks kind of like a sheet of paper, okay? This is what you use to draw on. So now what I'm gonna do is grab that croquis. So you should have downloaded it. You just press your wrench here, little wrench icon, press insert a photo. And then I'm going to grab the croquis, it's right here. And then you see it just auto populated, it's here. This is the back of my um, croquis. How can you tell? Because there's the booty. Um, and then there's her back too. <laughs> but this is the back of my croquis. This is the back of her head. So you see, um, that's where you would draw some hair or whatever you want to do. Um, and just in case you didn't know, when you use Procreate, you can use your fingers to get close and um, zoom in. I'm saying get close. So zoom in and zoom out. Okay. So you can get zoom in and zoom out by doing this um, with your fingers. Now, by mistake, I made it small. So I'm just going to remove that real quick because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Just in case you haven't seen any of my videos before, you're going to um, click here. This is the little um, arrow that helps you select things. And this is how you make things big and small. There are like little blue circles. Hopefully you guys can see them. Let's see, can you see those blue circles? Okay, so there's little blue circles here, 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 all over, right? You just kind of put your, hover your, your pencil on it and then you can move it just like this. So I can make it really small and I can make it, make it really big. What I say at this point is just play around with that. If you haven't done it before, play around with that so you can see how it can change size. So now um, I'm just going to leave it this size. The croquis was down here and I wanted it to move kind of centered. So I just, I put my, pen, uh, my pencil tip here and I moved it over. Okay, so you can also move it by putting your pencil right on top, but I often try not to do that because sometimes you can disturb any um, design or drawing you've done on it. All right, so I like to make my croquis a little bit small. So I, 
as you just saw, like I kind of zoomed out so I could see the entire canvas. I'm gonna uh, put my pencil again here on this uh, blue circle. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit and then I'm gonna move it right here in the center. And just in case, I realize I didn't um, like introduce myself if you never met me before, but one of the reasons is because I have lots of videos where I talk about my background, um, how I was a CAD artist, so computer-aided design. Um, I used to make fashion um, CAD, so fashion designs using computers, um, like Illustrator, Photoshop, that sort of thing. Um, and then I came across Procreate a few years ago. So I don't want to go too deep into that. I just want to let you know that, you know, I have professional experience as an illustrator. But when I started using Procreate, I actually struggled at first. So um, it can be daunting when you first come into this program. But really, all you need to know is that there are a few tools that will help you um, in your journey. So I just showed you a couple of them. That wrench tool, um, this this uh, arrow here, this one right here, I'll show you that really quickly. This is a select tool. So I'm going to click it. Let's say I wanted to select one item off of this croquis. Like, let's say I said, you know what? I want to change the direction of her head. So see how she's just looking straight back. Let's say I wanted to change the direction of her head. So I wanted to remove her head. You could erase it. So this is the eraser tool. You could erase it, but you could also remove it by just cutting it out. So you take that selection tool that I just selected. So I'm gonna do it again. So selection tool and you draw around whatever you want to cut out or remove or copy or whatever. Um, you make sure you close that certain, you know, the, the entire line you just drew, then hit the, uh, the arrow here. And now I'm going to swipe down with three fingers and I'm gonna press either cut or copy. If I wanted to use that head again, I would press copy. So I'll show you why you would press copy because it keeps the, the head there. But I'm gonna do it again because in this case, like I was saying, maybe I wanna remove that head completely. So I selected it again, um, drew around it again. I'm pressing this arrow again. Then I'm swiping down with three fingers. And now this time I'm selecting cut. So see now the head is gone. So let's say I had another head and I wanted to place it here. Um, I would have maybe in another, like let's say it was on another canvas. I would have come out of this, grabbed that head, and then I would go back to this one, swipe down again with those three fingers and press paste. So it brought it back um, just because we don't need it to be gone. But you see how it has that little line here? It's because I cut and copied it and it's on a different layer also. I'll talk to you guys about layers shortly, but I'm actually gonna just hit my favorite tool. It is called Redo. So I'm just gonna redo this. Um, sorry, not redo, undo. <laughs> undo is like Control Z um, or Command Z if you use a Mac. It just helps you go back to where you already were. So just gonna keep hitting it until everything comes back to normal. All right, so we're back at normal, um, but that was just something to show you how you can select different elements if you wanna move things around, remove things, uh, that sort of thing, okay? All right, so I wanna show you guys something um, that is, I think like when I'm drawing on a white background, I have a hard time seeing the, the edges of the croquis. I drew this with a slightly lighter edge because I didn't want it to have a thick black edge. You can, you can do whatever you want um, when you create your designs, but this is just my personal preference. So what I like to do is change the background color. So I'm gonna show you how to change the background color. And to me, it's more helpful to see. This bright white background, also my, um, what do you call this? My, you see that? So my, my uh, light, I don't know what you call that. You know, my... Brightness, brightness, what am I talking about? I don't know what you call that. My brightness is really high because I want you guys to be able to see. So um, in this case, it's super bright and it's really hard um, for me to see the edges. So let's change the color. So you're gonna go here. This right here is where you find your layers. Um, layers basically allow you to, so we're all designers here, right? So imagine when you are making maybe a dress that has maybe that skin tone mesh. I'm gonna show you um, physically and then um, then you'll see what I'm saying uh, like when I do it with the drawing. So I'm grabbing a couple things right quick. It doesn't have to be skin tone mesh either. I'm just, I'm gonna use something I have here. So, so I'm gonna just pull out some of my swatches. I have some swatch cards here. And then this is organza. And then I got a lace here. And then one more thing is I have 
this, all right? So imagine that these are layers. This is basically um, a physical representation of what I mean by layers. So imagine the first layer, imagine this is your croquis, right? And then the next layer, let's say I want to draw um, this, this mesh, or not this mesh, this net, right? So then I would place that right on top. So see, I'm gonna put it on my hand cause my hand is brown so you could really see. All right, so this is the first layer. We're pretending like that's our croquis layer. Or maybe my hand is a croquis. So my hand is a croquis. This is um, the organza. And then this is the net because I want to put net on this dress. And then I want to put this lace. Hold up. Everything was on top of each other, so I had a hard time. <laughs> um, and this is totally impromptu. This is not something I had planned to say, but I kind of want to explain just in case people don't know about layers. And then this is lace. So imagine I drew lace on this dress. So here's the lace. So, but you can still see underneath, right? And then the last layer, let's say I wanted to add some beading and something real pretty. This already has beads, but just roll with me. So then I place this on top. Now, the thing about Procreate is you can actually change some of the layers. So let's say I said, you know what? I do not want it to have this. I just want it to be like this. Or I don't want it to be this kind of lace i just want this net and the beading okay so that's just like a quick physical way to show you what layers means so now what i'm gonna do is go to the background layer of this sketch so as you can see back this is the layer we're on this is where the croquis is and then this layer right here is called background color i'm gonna click this and i'm going to make it my classic signature blue this is actually a little bit darker than my signature blue. This is really my, more my signature blue. Um, but I'm going to make it my signature drawing blue because I use this one a lot for my um, my backgrounds, especially when I'm drawing. If you see me on TikTok, you'll see that I use this one a lot. And now I can see better, you know. So this, this layer right here, this is our croaky layer. We need to make another layer so we can begin drawing. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab the dress that we're going to be drawing. So... I'm gonna grab that template, I'm pressing that wrench, I'm pressing insert a photo, and then I have to quickly go through here because I have a lot of drawings in here and I just realized I didn't pull it up. Actually, let me do it like this. I'm gonna do this. Let's go to my drive. So I this is all the stuff that I've been giving you guys. So I'm going to, this is the croquis, I mean not the croquis, this is the, uh, the mermaid dress. I'm going to download it see how do you download this one here here we go so I just I downloaded it and then I want to download one more thing we're also going to do some lace tonight so I'm going to also I'm just pressing my pencil against it that downloaded it and then now I'm going to hit that wrench again I'm going to insert photo and I'm going to grab that mermaid dress all right so as you can see the mermaid dress somehow somehow it ends up being really huge um I'm going to press the arrow so it selects everything. Um, actually, before I press the arrow, I wanna change the out, outline color. It's like a gray color. That's because this is a different kind of way to um, up for me to share a template. Um, I have been working on stamps and things like that, but it is slow going because like I'm an active designer. I have an active studio. I have a bunch of fittings. Like th in this next week, I have a few fittings. The week after that, I have a few fittings and I have a... Um, a couple shows I'm in so it's just it's a lot you know it's a lot to to remember to continue to bring to, to upload and work on things so I still wanted you guys to be able to practice so I created these templates um but they actually so so the issue with the templates is that it's a different kind of file type so sometimes the colors don't come out quite right so what we do is we just change the color so this is how you change the color of something um in this case it's the outline of this I want it to be, I want it to be this off black. I have an off black color here. It's just a little bit lighter than black. Um, you probably can't really tell. I, don't, I feel like you can't really tell from here, but it doesn't matter. The point is <laughs> that this is a little bit lighter, but you could use black and you would take, you would um, hover your, or press your, your pencil to the circle and then drag it over to the line of what I'm trying to create. Now I was doing some work the other day with a um with one of my students i had a private session with her and i had to do some color changing so that didn't quite work because of what i was doing the other day so i have to try again let's say yours does the same thing and it didn't color the entire 
you saw how some of it became black but not all of it so i'm going to do that again and i'm going to show you what to do if it doesn't fill in the whole thing or fill it in, when i say fill in the whole thing i just mean the lining not the inside of the dress okay so i'm going to again grab that color oops you see how it colored in the whole dress that's not what i want to do so i grab that color and then I'm sliding over. You see how it says threshold 27%. Let's say it um, still wasn't colored in. I would keep dragging it and dragging it and dragging it until it gets to completely filled in. But this time it works. Um, you can see right here that these didn't fill in. So I'm going to just do it down here as well. All right. And then the thing about these templates, because they're a different file type, I have to do a little bit of erasing. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. You just get kind of close to where you see, see how it didn't take the color. I'm just going to, I selected the eraser tool. I did it too fast, sorry. I do feel like I've gotten super fast with this and that's what happens when you practice a lot, you end up getting pretty fast. Um, but I just kind of, I just erased it just like you would with paper and pencil. So I'm just erasing the spots that came out a little bit wonky. You know, it's funny, I said that word and I actually do not like that word. Like, what does that even mean? Okay, so I'm just erasing all this. But when I said it, I knew y'all knew what I meant. You know, like people use that a lot. So I don't know what, what else you want to say. Maybe weird. It comes out a little weird. But even I feel like weird is not even a, a good enough word for it. All right. And see how that's a little bit um, white. Um, you could try to, to cover it, but it usually doesn't work. I typically might even just redraw it. So at this point, it doesn't matter. I just want you to be able to start drawing. Um so let's keep erasing. We only have a little bit more to do. So I'm just erasing here and then I'm erasing here. A little bit right there too. Okay. All right. So we got enough. We erased enough. Now, remember, this is the front of the dress, but the croaky is to the back. So I'm going to show you what to do if your croaky um, is to the back. You need to press the arrow. So again, that selects everything. And then actually, before we even turn it to the back, let's just make it smaller. Like, let's try to get it close to her size. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's not going to be because she's facing the wrong way anyway. All right, so it's it's close to her size. Um, I'm going to press flip horizontal. So it's down here. See these different tools? Um, press, or this it's more of a menu, but anyway. Press flip horizontal. That turns the dress around. Now, we're not going to use the sleeves or anything tonight because I'm actually going to redraw these elements to make a different dress um design at the top but i'm going to show you um still that you just need to line up the the back the front of the dress with the back of sorry it's not it is the front but we've turned it backwards i hope that makes sense we just turned it backwards so that it's facing where she will be facing and then we're going to just erase these details that make it the front okay all right all right i hope that makes sense all right so let's get closer and i'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit more and just trying to make sure I line it up. You really just want to make sure that the the sleeve the sleeves fit a bit. You can also honestly, I'm going to tell you one more quick secret for for doing this. Now, if you don't want to redraw, like let's say you still want a long sleeve and you don't want to redraw everything, um, then you would just need to make sure you you keep working on lining it up. But I'm actually about to skip all that because we don't need to do that right now. It's actually, to me, it's easier to just redraw it anyway, um, at least those parts, because we're not redrawing them in the bottom of the skirt, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to select the Erase tool. So you see how everything in the back is pretty much fitting pretty good, except for, because she has boobs in the front, so you need to make it fit to, to how her back kind of makes a bit of a V. So I'm just going to erase all of this. I'm going to get close because I don't want any extra pieces hanging. And then right there, I'm gonna stop right there and then I'll just do a little bit to, to clean it up. So this also made me think of, you see how like the hip is a little bit bigger? It's because in the front, she's kind of leaning a lot. So her hip kind of pushes out. But this made me think of like, if you ever have a client who has a larger booty, um, she might have more butt in the back than she, than she looks like she has in the front. This could be helpful because you might need to, to show her what her dress will look like on her. But right now we, we erased a lot of it and I'm going to just redraw a couple things. So I'm going to erase all the way to here and then all the way to here. 
let's see yeah all right that's good and then i'm clicking my brush tool when you click it you get all these brushes we're gonna just use right now the inking brush so click inking and then we're going to use the technical pen within the inking brush palette so these are all called palettes and then these are called um you know whatever it says these are technically the brushes but regardless um these are palettes you know each of them show you a palette and then and here are the different brushes you could use so this brush is called technical pen this is my favorite brush i'm gonna show you why this is a nice you can get a nice smooth line um, is good for for like your typical types of drawing it doesn't really get so so i don't know if you know but with apple pencil if you turn your pencil a little bit your um your pencil can create like a thicker bolder line or like a shadow i'm gonna show you what i mean right now because just saying it doesn't make any sense this one doesn't do it so let me show you with my other favorite pencil this is what i use for sketching it's called it's in the sketching palette and it's called the 6b pencil all right so so I'm drawing straight on. When I turn slightly, I didn't turn enough. Okay, when I turn slightly, I start to get more of a, like a smudgy, shadowy brush. This is good for shadow. I use another brush for shadow, but this is a good one for shadow too. And these are all free brushes I'm showing you right now, so you can experiment with them. So actually, I'm not gonna erase it. I'm gonna just go back and undo everything. But I just wanted to show you um, that you can, you know, change up how your lines look depending on the brush. Um, by the way you hold your pencil. All right, so let's go back to that inking palette again. We're on technical pencil. So, like I said, I want this dress to be, I've seen a lot of um, like halter, halter styles. So let's do a halter, right? Um, I spent on my iPad too, sorry y'all. Let me drink some water, I'm probably feeling dry in my mouth, okay. All right. Okay. So I don't know why I smacked my lips like that. Sorry, y'all. I apologize. Okay. So we're going to draw a halter. I'm going to um, make it on a different layer. I like to usually draw different elements on different layers so that I can just change them up if I need to. So I will show you how to do that. So press your layers again, press that plus sign here. This creates a new layer for you. So anything I write on here doesn't affect here. So I went back to the layer that we already were on. That's where the um, mermaid is. And then I'm, I'm erasing and it's not going away. But look, I'm erasing here and now it's going away. I'm going to just make it go away again because we don't need to do that. But I want to show you one more thing that you can do. Let's say you don't want to see a certain layer. Maybe you're working on something and you don't want to see the layer that's above it or beneath it. You can take off your layers by either pressing... Um, well, well, this is the way you take off your layer without removing everything. Um, but I'll show you another way to remove everything if you want to without having to erase it or press undo. So um, so this is where I drew those squiggly lines. I'm going to press the checkbox here and you see this is how I can get it to go away. But it's still there. It's just that it's, it's you know, maybe I, put, maybe I put it to the side. Maybe I want to come back to it later um, or maybe I need to fix something and I don't want to see that on top. All right, and then another thing that you can do, let's say I don't want this layer to have any of this stuff anymore, but I don't wanna just delete it. This is how you just delete the layer. You can swipe it over and you can press delete. If I wanted to copy the same thing that's on there, I press duplicate. And if I didn't want to like mess with a certain layer and I wanna make sure that whatever content or information that I drew or put on that layer stays, I press lock. But I just wanted to show you, this is how you can clear a layer. You click the layer and then over here, see this huge menu, you just need clear. So make sure you can see it. Now press clear and now it's gone. So um, you could, you know, just erase it or you could press undo, but this is also a fast way to do it. And that's what we're sticking with right now because I just wanted to show you how to do that. All right, so I'm going to get close and I'm going to start drawing that halter. You know what I want to do? I want to see what um, a halter style could look like. So do you guys ever do this? Do you go to like Pinterest maybe and look up ideas? I'm going to type in halter back wedding dress. I want to see if I see something pretty that I want to try. Halter backless wedding dress. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty. We will be here all day if I try to draw that. 
I feel like, ooh, okay, here we go. This is it right here. Yes, okay. I like this. I like this a lot. We're going to make the um, lace I have work with this, but I might just show you guys tonight how to draw some lace too, um, like a, a simple way to do it. So you know what? That's what we're about to do. I'm going to save this picture. I'm going to show you guys how I draw lace. So that's coming, but this is my inspiration. So you see it's super open. So let's draw that halter top. Let me just look at it again real quick. Sometimes I got to look at it a couple times. Oops, that did not work. I'll just look here because I saved the picture. So, all right. Ooh, I like it. So it has like, um, let me stop going to Pinterest. So it has little buttons on it. So let's do that. All right. So I'm just drawing based on what I want it to look like. I want it to be a little bit curved. A little bit curved. I'm going to join the curve like this. Okay, that looks cute. It looks cute enough, at least, that's what I'm saying. And then I'm going to, let's look at the back one more time. So she's not as deep. I want mine, I always feel like I want it to be like almost butt cheek showing, because I'm sassy, I'm a sassy lady. I am I never wear that myself, but I think it's, I think it's sexy. And then like this, actually. I don't like how that looks, so I'm gonna do it again. Erase that little dot. this and then it's for some reason when I was trying to draw that point it didn't come out too good so so I just got close and I joined my lines together it's a little bumpy so instead of me deleting that whole line or erasing the whole line I'm actually just gonna make my I didn't show you guys this this is how you can make your eraser or your brush bigger or smaller um so right now I'm just gonna show you how to erase because I just made that it bump out a little bit too much. You can hardly see it really close up, but I just erased a little bit of it. And then maybe a little bit here too, cause it got kind of crooked. And this is that stuff that nobody would notice. Like, let's be real, um, people wouldn't even see it because once you start adding elements to it, you can't even see it. But I like that, that sexy V. And if she had a bigger booty, you would see a little, you might see a, a hint of a cheek. So I like that. All right, so now, Let's see. Okay, now we're gonna um, work on the actual rest of the skirt because the back is pretty much done in terms of like laying down the design elements of what the what what it looks like. You know, um, this is something that I can change with different laces. Put mesh. Put this. Put that, and then you get a different look. Um, but it's it's you know this is how the dress will look. So let's let's start drawing the rest of this um, this dress. So I'm just. Oops. I'm just um, tracing along because this is a, a closely fitted dress like that one you saw. And my skirt just so happens to work for it. And I actually, I'm gonna do something to the skirt so it looks more like the back. So it doesn't look exactly like the front. But as we know, you know, you might get the girl who wants the, the 90 inch train or the 120 inch train or the 180 inch train. I hope not for prom, like stop, <laughs> just stop it. It's gonna be too much, you can't even properly dance. Um, but if you do, um, I wanna show you what to do to make the train longer. So I'm just drawing along the edges, just tracing along. And um, PSA, I would like to let you know that because this is my last class, um, my last free class, I'm actually going to be either putting up a paywall or having this as, you know, part of only for paid customers or something like that. I'm not really sure. I don't know if I'm actually going to make you pay for it, but because um, I've given it to so many people for free already. But this is my last class. And the thing that I noticed, I, I would get a lot of DMs about people asking, can you can you help me draw this? How do I do this or that? And the truth is, it's a lot of work, um, you know, trying to come up with an academy and the, and the free content and everything to create. Um, and I realized that even through the, um, the students of the academy, they all had different needs. So what ended up happening is um, I realized that I needed to kind of tailor my content and tailor everything to each person, which is a lot of work. So I decided, you know what? I need to start offering more of the private 
classes and private lessons. So if you look, there is a link to purchase the private lessons. I'm either doing one for $150. That's a private recorded Zoom session. I'll send you away with homework um, so that you can keep practicing and keep learning. And I just had a session the other night and I gave the designer the templates that I created for her during the class. Um, so that's one for 150, but tonight only I am doing three for, uh, $300. So that's paying for two and getting the third one free. Basically. Um, I'm not going to be doing that anymore, um, past tonight. Um, and just like I said, you know, I either adding a paywall or doing something different with this, but I wanted to extend that to you guys. I only have three of those available. Okay. So three, three of the three sessions for $300. For the $150 ones, I have 10 of those available, but I have um, three people who have already hit me up for those. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, if you see something and you're like, well, I need to design this kind of thing, or I need help drawing this sort of thing, um, that's what those free lessons will do for you. They will help you to be able to draw what you need to draw. I have a, a student right now who, she doesn't actually do wedding dresses. So um, I actually didn't start off in wedding dresses. I started off in denim, active wear, and cut and sew knit. So that's like, uh, what well, kind of like active wear, um, sweaters, things like that. Um, so I have experience in drawing all kinds of things. So I'm showing her how to draw her shorter dresses. They're not cocktail dresses. They're more like day dresses, um, tops, bottoms, things like that. Um, so we can gear the class towards whatever you need. What do you design? Like, let me know and we can create templates for that. So, and we would do it together as well. So that's it for right now. I want to show you how to change the shape of this, this train. So we, we got the shape of the dress. Okay. Let's press select. Now I'm going to show you these quick tools really quickly. I already showed you how to size and resize. So see, I'm making it bigger and smaller. Um, let me just go back, get it back to the size it was. This, that's the uniform. I never use freeform. I actually do not know <laughs> what it's supposed to really do. It hasn't really done anything helpful to me, so I don't really use it. So ignore that one for now. But the next tool I use is distort. So sometimes I might draw um, a dress on a plus size or a, or a curvy, sorry, not on a plus size. So on like this, this uh, form, but maybe I want to use this skirt on a plus size croquis or on a um, curvy croquis. So I use this one, it's called Distort. This allows you to widen or make much thinner or slimmer um, your design or your, you know, whatever you've drawn. Okay, so that's helpful for that. Another, um, the other one that I really love, I use this one often, it's called Warp. So Warp allows you to change how an element looks. So I can, I can bring it up like this. I can, you know, do all that. Now that might not be something you need to do, but I often do this for making trains. Um, I'm going to pull it down like this. Okay, so let me just go out a little bit. So let's say, I would say this train right here is probably like maybe 60 inches. So I just made it what it was already. And then now I'm making it, 100 sorry not 100 uh 90 this is 90 let's say this could be uh, maybe 120 also you might widen it out here too you might widen it out here too so see that and then i'm not going to be able to show you on this because the canvas is a little bit too small but i'll just show you really quickly if you wanted to make it um like 160 so you can't even see it let's see if i just move it up a little bit Nope, I have to do it like this. All right, so let's say I want to make it 160, right? And then, like I said, you can widen it here too. So you can widen it to, to go with how, how much more volume of fabric you have. So I'm not going to do the 160. I think I'll stick to one. Did I move it a little bit? Okay, maybe like the 120. So I'm just widening it out, widening it out, widening it out little bit right um and you see how this right here didn't really move because just like if it was a pattern like you making this dress for real and this was a pattern that you made it needs to match the front so up until this side so like let's say it's go days and it's panels and all that stuff um the 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 panel that's closest to like the side the side panel side front panel needs to match 
side back and then you can start widening it widening it why can't i say that word like what's going on all right so so we got our train going actually i'm gonna widen it a little bit more a little bit touch more okay that's good now you could so here's something that you could do let's say you didn't i, I just want to say this real quick some of these things we don't need to do because if you show this to your customer like just add some color to it and be like this is your dress she would love it she probably wouldn't even be like oh i need to do, do this different or whatever the reason is just because um our customers if they don't know how to do any of this they can't sew they can't draw they can't do any of this stuff anything you do is exciting and amazing to them right but if you want to you could i'm going to show you real quick you could draw another um not another but a and I'm not going to really be able to do it like that dress. But sometimes, like, let's say I want that dramatic V Godet. I might start, like, first of all, I would have a, a line here to indicate this is that center back. Maybe it's a hidden zipper. And then I would open it up in a V like this. Actually, I made that too narrow. I want it to be really ridiculous. So I might open it up in a V like this. And then the other side as well. So I drew right on top of it and then see, so, so I can't really show this properly like I really want to. Let me just see if I can move it up. Ugh, have to move everything up. All right, let, just bear with me. All right, so I'm gonna make the croquis go away right now. Uh, I'm gonna let it go away and I'm gonna make the that go away because I just wanna show you, but I'm not gonna do this on the final drawing. Okay, so I moved up the skirt. Oh, my music stopped. So I moved up the skirt and now I'm moving up that V I just drew. I'm gonna move the skirt a little bit more because I really need some room for this. If you got that lady, I have a lot of brides who want like the, the very dramatic train. So if you got that bride and she's like, or or the prom, um, your prom girl, and she wants that dramatic train, you can draw a V. Hold up, hold up, okay. Yeah, like here, okay. So you can draw a V on top and then you would just kind of like make a U or another V at the bottom of it. So kind of like this. You can add more flair to it if you want to, but that, the one I just showed you, the one I was, um, you know, the one I was just drawing doesn't really have a ton of flair to it. And those are just kind of like, like lines like this. And then you kind of shade it in, if that makes sense. So you could do something like that. And then we're going to be undoing all this, just so you know. And then I would just erase everything underneath to get that look to get the look that I want. So it looks like, um, it looks like that gown with the, the big, huge go day train. Okay, so, and obviously you would connect these sides. Where are we? Okay, right here. Okay, so you would connect these sides. So maybe I would go like this, Oops. like this, and then like this, and then I will erase the excess here too. You don't have to erase all of it because you, you would have a little bit of that going on. So see how I didn't erase this one right here? I'm leaving that one. And then I would leave this one. So you see, like, I changed it and made a more dramatic, full, big, huge train. So you can do that. But now let's just go back because we're not going to do that. We're going to just keep hitting redo. Oh, sorry, undo. I keep saying redo. I don't know what's going on tonight. Um, and it's going to move everything back down. So I'm pleased with how this train looks right now. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to do anything massively different. I'm just going to start doing the color filling in and all that. And then we're going to add lace. All right. So making sure I'm in the right place. All right. Okay. So I didn't show this before, but this is important to do um, when you are drawing um, your dresses. You need to make sure you organize your layers. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's start with the croquis layer. I'm gonna press where it says layer one. I'm gonna press rename. I'm gonna press the little keyboard that pops up. Sometimes um it doesn't, sometimes it just pops up automatically and sometimes it doesn't. In this case it didn't, but I'm gonna type in croquis. Then I'm gonna press the next one. It says inserted image. Let me just see what it is. I know it's the skirt, but I just wanna make sure. And that's what you do as well. Just make it go away for a second so you can see what you what what layer you're on. And then I'm gonna put um, skirt. I don't know if I just hit the camera and moved it around. Sorry, sorry. 
Okay. And then this one, this one has nothing, but I'm just going to, you know, again, it's a good idea just to check. So I'm clicking it. Nothing. Okay. And then this one here, this was the halter top. I'm going to click it to confirm. And then I'm going to type in halter top. Halter top. Let's call it halter back because this is the back of the dress. So I like to be consistent in the way I name things. If it was the front, I would have said the halter top. I'm saying the halter back because this is this is what it is. All right. So now, so now we have all of our layers organized except for this one because we haven't done anything with it yet. I'm actually going to delete it. And now I'm going to click this layer here. I'm going to press plus. Um, and I'm going to color in this dress. So I showed you guys before um, an option for how to color in your dress. And then I learned new things. I be learning too. I learned new things. I learned how to color in um, your cro your croquis or your, your illustration um, without as much uh, work. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So you're going to press the skirt layer. Press the word skirt or whatever, whatever it says there, whatever you have, press reference, go back to this layer. And then um, I think I wanna follow the color of this dress. I wanna follow the color of this dress, I think. So my girl is brown skin. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, a, I, I'm, most of my dresses end up being white, you know, cause you know, I, I mostly make wedding dresses. So I'm gonna click, this is my white wedding dress palette. Um, I'm using like an off whitish, almost gray color here, clicking out of it. And then remember, I pressed my pencil here. I dragged it over here. Now I'm dropping it inside of the, um, the sketch, but then I'm going to move the pencil over until it catches the color. So it didn't work cause I'm still too close. So Sometimes I have to come out a little bit because it, it, it needs to get as close to zero as possible. When you get close to zero, it usually covers it, colors in the, um, the drawing. Sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes um, it could be at 70 in color in the dress. It just depends on um, the sketch. You only know when you do it. So I'm going to try again. Brought it in. Bring it over. All right. So... This didn't work, I'm gonna tell you why. It didn't work because there are open spaces here. So what I have to do now, I'm gonna give you guys a quick tutorial on open spaces on your sketches and why um, sometimes it won't work. So let's go back to this, this skirt again. Let's use the black color or the grayish black, whatever I use, it's kind of like an off, off black charcoal. All right, so now I need to just look around and see where I didn't close things. So this might be it right here. See how it's a little bit open? Um, let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to make a circle real quick and I'm closing the circle. Oh, and let me just show you that too. So you can close, um, sorry, you can make things smoothed out. So let's say you draw a line and saw crazy. That's not too bad. Cause I, I draw lines a lot, but let me make it purposefully crazy. If you just hold your pen at the bottom of the line, it becomes straight. I'm gonna do it again. Purposely crazy. Straight. But even a line that's not too badly. See how that top part was a little bit curvy? Now I can show you with a circle. Um, actually, I'll show you with a curve. So this is a curve. Maybe it's like an armhole or something. Made it smooth. This is like a bumpy curve. That made it not smooth. That made it, because it thinks I want to do a zigzag. So let me, let me try it again. I, did, I went a little bit too far. That made it straight because I put that bottom straight. So I need to just stick to the plan here. So now it's smooth. Um, and now you can do the same thing with the circle. So you draw around like this, like this is good for making buttons or pearls or something. And I held it and now you see how it's smooth and you can also make it bigger and smaller. See that? Um, that can be an eyelet. I do that a lot for eyelets. Again, see how that was? It's probably hard to see. Let me see if I can make a really big one. Cause if it's really big, you can see. See that? This is an egg. All right. So let's go back to what I was doing. Oh, so now let me let me show you the closing it. I forgot that's why I was doing that in the first place. All right. So we're going to do that again. I'll make a big circle. It's not closed, but it's smooth. And when I drop the color in, see, it doesn't work. But if I close this to the top of the circle, drop the color in, now it fills in the circle. 
So that's what I was trying to say. If your drawing isn't completely closed, how about I do a square? This is a terrible square, but you can make the square smooth too. I'm gonna just erase a side. All right, so it filled in the whole thing. Now, I'm even. I'm not even gonna um make it make the point on the end. I'm actually gonna just close it like this. So see that is all closed. Now it's filled in. So when you don't um, close the edges of your designs, um, the color goes outside of it. You know, like it runs outside of it. So I'm just gonna close this. This should be the. This should be what I needed to do. Um, I see that she's not completely lined up here. Let's erase it and just fix it. Because if I don't do that right now, um, it will end up not filling in properly. You'll see her skin on the outside. And who wants that to happen? If it's a design element, sure, but that's that was not part of the plan. All right, so sorry if I keep hitting the camera. All right, so let's try again. That might have been it. I'm gonna just do it with the black. Oops, that might have been it. I might, I'm not really sure. Nope, that wasn't it. So there, there must be places here that are not completely filled in. Um, like this is this one's a, a little bit of a difficult design, so. I'm just going to look around and see if there's any more that I could close up. That looks closed. That's closed. Sometimes like around these parts, it gets, that's where it's kind of open. That looks like it might not be fully closed. Okay. Okay. That's closed. Yeah, so, and yeah, you got to do this. You just got to check around, make sure it's all closed. That looks closed, that looks closed. I'm just going to smooth that out. Because it could be pixelated and looks like it's closed, but it's really not. Let's do this, just to make sure. And I did mess around with that a little bit, so I want to make sure that's closed. Just to make sure this is. Everything should be closed, baby. I don't know what's going on. Oh, right here. That might not be too close. Okay. So, this is what's about to happen. If it doesn't close, I'm just going to do this one too. Um, might be, might be open, might be acting right. Um, but acting wrong, not acting right. So, let's try again. Oops. I did not hold it properly. Yeah. So, we're already at 0%. For so, so, for some reason, it doesn't want to take it. It could be also these lines in here. Um, this is why that other op that other way I showed you guys how to um, color things in, it's it's foolproof. Um, it does take more time. I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna try this real quick. So let's see if it was if it's acting wrong because it's acting wrong. Nope, it's for some reason it's not working tonight. I don't know. Just made me a whole liar. Like I did not need this tonight. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's it's not working. I'm looking everywhere I can to see if it's all closed. Sometimes, I don't know, tech just gets weird sometimes. So I'm going to see, maybe it is right here. Like it looks close to me, but I can't tell. I feel like it could be this. Like that could be what's the problem. Like I might not be able to get it because that's, um, that is, it overlaps a bit. So it's a little weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's not closing, y'all. All right, so plan B, we're going to color it in my regular, regular way. Um, I will make another video when I figure out what's going on and why this is not working. So I'm just going to the croquis layer. I'm pressing plus. I'm pressing, um, not pressing, I'm grabbing that color, that off-white, and I'm grabbing my pen called Syrup. I use this pen for filling in stuff. This is an, it's not as easy in terms of like, it's it, okay, it's easier, but it's, it takes more work. So I like to make the pen a smaller size and I like to just outline it. So you're going to have to outline this whole thing. This is what used to take me a lot of time until I learned how to do that. But apparently it ain't working tonight. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I feel so sad. Actually, I don't. I feel okay. It's fine. It happens sometimes. So I'm just filling in. Not filling in. I'm just drawing an outline. I'm getting as close to that, the black line. 
as I can. Right here. Let me drink some water. Also, let me check the time. I didn't give an end time for this tonight. Um, actually didn't give an end, end time for this tonight because this is my last class and I want it to be thorough. So that's why I showed you a lot of beginner stuff and basic stuff to help you start getting um, in, in the drawing process. But um, I feel like there's somebody on here right now who's like, what the heck? <laughs> this This is all great, Danny, but like, I need more help than this. I need you to like basically hold my hand and tell me exactly what to do. Click that link in the bio, um, not bio, what am I talking about? I'm acting like I'm on Instagram. Um, click my link, um, I got two links there. Link one is for one session. Maybe you just need one session so you can figure it out. I literally had one session with a lady who made like stickers and stuff using Procreate. Also, I would like to make stickers. Um, but yeah, I had one session with a lady who made stickers um, using Procreate and they were super cute too. Um, and she basically was like, listen, you know how to use Illustrator so you can figure this out. Um, let me just show you. Just didn't realize how to use this or that. I did that one session with her. She told me, this is your homework. Do this, do that. I, I played around. I started practicing every day. And this was after um, having a really hard time learning this. Um, I had bought my iPad. I was mad excited. I was like, oh, I'm about to, I'm about to kill this. This about to be, I'm about to, this about to be, this about to be, this is it. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was so excited. I was telling my husband, I was telling my kids. I was like, what did you talk about? I don't care. But anyway, um, so I, I bought my iPad, I downloaded Procreate, bought my iPad, my Apple Pencil, bought my little, my cover um, for it, bought my, um, I bought a little bag and I bought this Apple Pencil sorry this ipad cover i was about to say apple pencil cover i just said that um i bought all that stuff then i went crazy buying brushes i must have um used like 300 dollars buying brushes and stamps and stuff that i do not use right now and i tried to use it and everything i did was garbage like literally everything we're gonna go through some of my old stuff so you can see them once we're done with this sketch but it was it was just garbage and i was really sad um, I even had a client that I needed to make her sketch for and she was an art teacher and she actually knew how to use Procreate. I should have asked her, but, but I don't know if she would have bought her dress for me. But, um, you know, I, I explained to her, I had just started with Procreate. I didn't know how to um, color it in, but this was after like being late on just submitting the sketch, which is, that doesn't look good, you know, right? Just submitting the sketch, I'm late. But she was, she was understanding and she was like, no, it's, it's all good, you know, um, just send it when you, whenever you can. I drew the sketch. It looked basically kind of like this, just lines. I couldn't properly color it in. Um, I didn't know how to use colors right. I didn't know how to fill in stuff right. And I was just, it was just, it was a nightmare and a disaster. I'm like, not for real. No, no, for real. Why did I say not for real? What am I talking about? For real. It was a disaster. I hated it and I felt really sad. So for six months after that, every sketch I made was garbage. So I was just like, I'm not doing this no more. And I left it alone for six months. And whenever I would think about it, I would cry, you know, I would like literally cry. I'm a sensitive person anyway. So I just felt like I wasted my money. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I also felt like I was old, you know, like I see a lot of younger people, um, you know, it seems like they grasp tech and stuff like that easily. And I always felt like I was a techie person. Um, I thought I was a techie person. I thought I was good at, you know, tech and I thought I understood it. And this just made me feel old and sad and like, it was just a, it was a nightmare. And then I had that one session and that one session changed everything. She gave me a different way to look at things. She showed me like that thing I just showed you with how to close stuff. She showed me how to do that. And that was like, that was a game changer. Did you see what I just did? Okay, let's do it again. So I've done this whole outline, right? Now... I'm just going to grab the color and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I dropped it and now it's all white. You see that? Um, I used to do this and I had to do a ton of cleanup. Right now I only have a little bit. I had to do a ton of cleanup because the color would go outside the lines. But we got a white back. So we this looks like the back of a dress. I need to add that um, seam. I did not add the back seam where um, you know the zipper would be if I'm putting a zipper. So let's just do that. I'm just changing back to the um, technical pencil. I'm actually going to make it slimmer. 
we're gonna go to we're gonna use the skirt again we're gonna like go to the skirt layer um, but I'm gonna show you again I was telling you before how you make the eraser smaller and the brushes smaller um, but I'm gonna show you right now I'm gonna get close and I'll do it right on here since it's white now you can see good so I'm going to oops, I'm gonna draw the line here like this will be the the back seam um, but if I wanted this to be like an invisible zipper and I want it to be smaller, I'm going to erase up until like, make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to erase until like here. We'll say like that's where her, well, a little bit lower. Yeah. Okay. So that's, we'll say that's where the, the zipper stops and just the back seam starts, right? Um, now I'm going to show you how to make the pencil smaller. I just did it with the eraser. It's literally the same thing. Um, so we got that, that size of uh of i want to call it a stroke like the pen the pen stroke is that size when i click here i just clicked right on the little slider it's at five percent let's see what two percent will look like oops and i did not do it on the right layer so that's three percent sorry this was a three percent so let's say what see what uh one percent look like so you see it's much skinnier but let's say I don't like that. I want it to be thick for some reason. Maybe I want it to be thick. So I just put it to 24%. So this is what 24% would look like. There's no reason for me to have such a thick line, but I just wanted to show y'all just in case you were wondering. So we're gonna go back to that 1% again, because we're saying that this is an invisible zipper, so you shouldn't really see a huge, oops. You, you might not see a really thick line. It, you can keep it at the same, also it doesn't have to be skinny or anything it's not necessary but sometimes I like to do different things just to see and play around with how it will look um, and then I'm going to add little stitch lines so I said it was an invisible zipper so you usually don't see stitch lines but I want to remember that this is a zipper so I'm drawing it on here even though it's invisible so it would be kind of those stitches would be hidden um, I just want to. Oh, and now I'm going to show you one more thing. I didn't show you this earlier. Um, let's just copy that. Let's not redraw that ourselves. It's just, it was a lot of work because it was small, you know, it's super detailed to draw those. So instead, I'm just, I just so use a select tool, drew all the way around what I just drew, the, um, the stitch lines. And now I'm pressing the arrow to select everything, swiping down to press and press and copy. Swipe down again, press paste, and now I will just move it over. So now we've got a stitch line. And then this, these are on two separate layers, so I'm going to bring them on the same layer. I don't like to have similar elements on different layers. They should be on different layers, uh, sorry, together on the same layer. But when you press copy, it already create it creates an automatic different layer for you, another layer right on top. So in my um, opinion, there's no reason for that. If I needed to change something, let's say I want to change the color of this. Um, in fact, let me show you. Let's say I want to change the color of that stitch and I don't put them on the same line. I'm just going to get a little bit closer because those are small. I'm going to drop it. Of course it does that because it's just hateful to me for some reason. This is not my night. Okay, you see that? So see like... The reason why this one didn't change color as well is because they're on separate layers. There's no real reason for um, having, them on having them on separate layers. So let me just remove that, do it one more time. Sorry, not one more time. So we remove that and now we're gonna press the, so we're on that layer, press inserted image and then press merge down. Now everything is on the same layer. So again, how can you tell? You just hit that check mark and it'll show you that it's all in the same layer. All right. so. Now we've got that zipper there. And then I always do this. This is what I was taught when I was in fashion design school. You draw um, a little, you know, a little, la uh, like, I don't know what you would call it. You draw a little line like this. That means that's the butt. You can also, you know, if let's say you got a, a girl with a, a big butt or, or whatever, you know, like she wants to show off her butt, maybe you would draw um, kind of cheeks looking, but not really a lot just a little bit, like a hint of cheek. So I'm going to do this because that's my style. You could do whatever you like, but that also shows that this is the back of the dress. All right. 
Um, we didn't color this top part because remember that was on a different layer. So let's just see. I'm going to try one more time what I just did, what I was trying to show you with the, the reference layer and just draw, um, color it in easy. So I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to press halter back, press reference, press skirt, press plus, because we're not trying to do it on the skirt layer. Press this to make, to get that color I'm looking for. I'm going to get close. I'm going to drop it in here and it worked. So I don't know what happened. This is less complicated. So maybe um, it was easier to color in. I don't know. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone. But look, we've got the full back of the dress. And now it's just time to do the last part, which is adding some lace. So at this point, I just want to share real quick. Um, there are different ways to do what I'm doing. You could, um, for example, you could decide to, um, I'm going to show you real quick, that skirt of the dress, see how it's sheer? Um, you could do one of two things. There's actually even more than that, but I'm going to show you two ways to make that sheer sort of look. So the first way is just press the eraser tool. I didn't show you this one earlier um, because we didn't need it yet, but this slider down here is transparency. So let's press i need i just need a color that you can see so i'm just pressing that's like a black um and i'm going to use the syrup tool because it's bigger or the syrup brush because it's bigger so this is regular nice and thick right i don't want it to be nice and thick i want it to be lighter so i'm going to use the slider down here i'm doing it like 50 percent opacity and now it's sheer so what can that be used for well in this case I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm going to have to do it on two of these layers, right? So I'm going to reduce it to 50%, get close. That's a little bit too small, so I got to make it bigger. So I'm going to get close, and then I can erase to give it that um, sheer look that we want. Now, on the skirt, I'm going to do it differently. This is my second way. Um, I've shown this in videos before. This is how I make like that illusion mesh and things like that. Um, I'm going to, let's just put this back up to regular. We don't need it, but I just, I just don't want to forget later. Um, I'm going to press the air, the arrow. I've selected everything. I'm going to press, I'm swiping down, pressing copy, swiping down, pressing paste. Then I'm on this top layer, the one that's underneath. I'm going to press this in. I also did not show you all this before. But I'm going to press this in because we didn't need it. So th this is why I didn't show you stuff. Um, I'm going to press that in. And you see all these, um, this list of all these different things. We don't need them. Um, maybe in the future, I'll show you how to use them. They're not really necessary. I, I don't actually even use them for drawing themselves. I might use it to make things look a little bit different. But this in is what we're focusing on in the menu that comes up here. So this is opacity. So remember how I made the eraser like 50%? Let's do the same thing here. We just slide it down to like 50%. And you can't tell yet because this this opaque regular layer is on top. I'm going to press this check mark. Now you can see it is sheer. So let's bring that back because now you're like, well, why, why did you make that underneath sheer? I'm going to show you. So we're going to take, so we got the eraser here. We're going to bring this closer. I'm going to look at the dress real quick. So ours is not going to be exactly the same. I'm going to do something similar because her skirt, her uh, Godet, the train of the Godet starts higher. It starts kind of closer up here, but we're just going to do our version. So I'm just going to erase. So now you can see the, the sheer underneath. And then I'm going to, I'm going to make it a V because I can give it a similar look. You know, like you don't have to always draw it out fully. You can make it look like that through um, the techniques you use to, for, for your drawing and your coloring and all that stuff. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just giving it a V shape, kind of mimicking the V that I made for that for the back too. Okay, so now we got that V shape. And what's next is to add um, lace appliques. So we're going to go and grab the lace appliques that we um, added. I just want to go to the top layer. So this is the halter layer. I'm going to go to the top layer so that all this lace I put goes um, on all, this, all the dress instead of just um, the skirt. So I'm pressing the wrench tool, press insert a photo. 
Um, this is a lace applique. Um, I'm going to just make the screen a little bit smaller so I can see. The color is white, so it's perfect. I'm just going to grab the little blue circles and I can make it bigger and smaller, making it about this size, about this size. And I'm going to just kind of turn it so I can fit it along that, uh, the V I just made. I like the way that looks. Um, you can take pieces of the lace. So this is my favorite piece right here. Um, you can take pieces of the lace and use what you like. You can also erase what you don't need. So I'm keeping that piece, but I'm going to erase this because I don't need it to overlap. I always will end up using this somewhere else. And then I'm going to grab more lace. Actually, I don't need to grab more lace because the lace is, you know, I copied it. So it's still here. So I can just swipe down again, press paste. Oops. I did not do, okay, y'all, I'm sorry. I forgot that um, I added it in with the wrench tool and stuff and inserted a photo. Typically, this lace is already in my iPad. So once you have it saved, you can actually just go into the, um, like let's say you, um, you upload it to a canvas, which I didn't even share, like you can do that. You don't have to keep it as just a, um, a downloaded image. You can upload it to a canvas. You can change the colors of it. I'll show you how to change the color actually. But let's say I I wanted different colors of it. I could upload it to a canvas. So there doesn't have to be a croquis here. You could just upload that lace. Actually, I'll show you. All right, so I'm just making another um, canvas, but every time you create a new canvas, the number is still here. My favorite size is um, actually a square, so I'll show you how to make a square. This is what I usually do for laces. It's 2048 by 2048, so that's a square. I press create, and then I'm gonna insert that lace again. The lace is now here, but I don't want it to be white, I want it to be black. So I'm grabbing the black here and I'm dropping it down. It's not quite black like I want it to be. I don't know what that black is about. Oh, here we go. I must have hit it kind of wrong. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so now I have a black version of this lace. But let's say I want to have just a file of just this lace type. So I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to insert it again. So I'm just going to insert it twice and I'll have two versions of this lace. Um, shrinking it down, just looking at it with my eyes to see how big it is. And then let's say I want to make a reddish colored dress. So I'm, I selected red and now, now I have a red lace. So now what I was saying is that, um, this lace is always in my iPad. So I might just select part of this lace and say, oh, this is what I want to use. So I just selected it. I'm copying it. Now I can go to the canvas I was already on. Can I go to it? Yeah, I can go to it. All right, so I can go to the canvas I was already on. I can paste it into that canvas. So now I got this red lace here. So you don't always have to keep on opening that file and resizing and all that. That's something that you can do if you want to, but when I'm drawing, I actually don't do that. I just take it from the, the file where I made it. Okay, so back to the white lace again. So I am gonna um, grab it from here just for continuity. This is what we already did. I'm gonna shrink it down again. We don't have to change the color. Shrinking it a little bit more. We don't have to change the color, but I do want to fill in this skirt as much as I can. It's not going to be 100% filled in, but that's okay. I like this little piece that's down here too, so I'm just going to grab it. Get close to it so I can see better because I couldn't really see. I'm grabbing it. And then I can just move it. So I'm just going to put those two right next to each other so I remember I have these. Um, and then I'm not going to redraw everything again. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not going to bring it in again. Like I just did. I'm just going to actually select it, copy it, paste it, flip it, put it over here. And then I'll just erase that extra. There's a little bit extra on that side too. I can erase, but I actually didn't realize it at first. I wasn't really looking too hard at it. And then we'll do it again. Um, paste again. Cause the point is that I'm just trying to fill in this, um, the skirt. Um, and typically I use this as a placeholder lace. The, um, the actual final lace that I might use might be different, but I might use this to show to one of my clients and say like, 
this is an example of what your fully lace dress will look like. And then I'll have her choose from my swatches or I'll contact my suppliers um, to search for the exact lace that we want to use. But this is just, this makes it easy. So you don't have to sit here um, and draw that exact lace. Um, this is why I give this one for free because I feel like it, it works pretty well just to show like, um, you know, it's, it's like a, this is not a panel or a bodice. I know people call it a bodice. Um, so this is not a bodice. This is a, this is just like appliques. So the, it doesn't work the same like as for, for a bodice or a, a panel, you know, it doesn't work the same, but it is, it is still pretty good. Um, so I'm just merging everything down so that all that lace I just took and, um, and added will be on the same layer. And I just do this so if I want to change the color, it will all be on that same layer. So we just merging it and now everything is together. And then these little pieces that I have here, I'm just drawing around them so I can grab them and move them into places that I need. Oops. Yeah, I'm on that layer. I don't know what just happened. That was weird. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to copy that too, that little piece. For some reason, it, it pops back to where it was. I guess it, they think you don't really want to use it or something. All right. So we got this whole bottom of the skirt filled in. Um, and now the last part, the thing that I told you guys that I would show you is just how to draw a lace real quick. We're actually going to do this on a different canvas. So just like I just showed you how to make that square, I already have the square uh, 2048 by 2048. I already have that um, saved. I'm going to grab that dress. I'm going to increase the size of this because I just want to really be able to see it. Then I'm going to make this first layer transparent. Whenever you're tracing something, you can make that layer transparent. So I'm going to press the end. I'm sliding it down a bit, not crazy. I don't want it to be too too light. Then I'm gonna press the plus sign. I'm gonna make it, It's this is a white lace, so let's make it white. Let's grab a pen, the um, brush library, and then we need to draw, I'll use the sketching pencil, cause I like that it has a, a texture to it. Um, and now we're just gonna get close, and we're just gonna trace. And that's a little bit thin, so I'm gonna make it thicker, so y'all can see. Hopefully you can see. If you can't see, please let me know. And I can't fully see everything that's on this lace because it's a little bit fuzzy because the picture is small. So I'm just kind of imagining what I think it should look like. You do not have to draw everything here. In fact, I suggest you don't. You can copy stuff. You see, see stuff, you just like, um, this looks similar to that, do that. But this is literally how I draw lace. And just gonna grab pieces. So I don't want this to be perfect because I kind of just want you guys to see. But if you were drawing this, I want you to make it look as close to what you see as possible. But here's just a little caveat to that. I, hopefully I'm using that word right. Try not new words tonight. Um, basically, your client probably can't even see all this. Like she can't, you know, like when you're looking at the sketch, you can't see all the detail. So you can do all this, but just know like when I make laces for real, like instead of just a quick demonstration, I do sh like draw almost every little bit of it. But I can tell you right now, there has not been a time where a bride was like, oh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to buy this dress because you didn't draw every bit of the lace. Like they don't know. They have no idea. So I'm just copying it. I'm going to paste it over here. And then I'm placing it on her back, her or not her back, but you know, on this. Just trying to shrink it to fit. You know, it's not the exact same woman and everything, so it doesn't fit completely. 
And then I'm gonna um, just grab a few pieces. I'm gonna grab a few pieces like this one. And copy it. Erase this right here. All right. And then it looked like there was like, almost like, I'm gonna merge that down so it's on the same layer. So it looked like there was, let me just look at the picture again. Yeah, like, so there's also, either it's crinkly, I can't tell from here. Also, this this skirt has sequins. We ain't gonna do all that tonight, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. But, um, it looks crinkly, so I'm gonna add those crinkles. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but if I was a bride and I saw this, I would say, like, you're giving me that feel. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this, this area right here, I think it's going all the way into here, would be sequins. Um, so you could, you know, for, for your actual dress, take that off. Or actually make it you know make it look like that but in this case um, this is this is really good so I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit oops that's the eraser sorry and I need to shrink it again okay so I'm shrinking it down I'm just gonna draw those lines draw on those lines so if you're looking at this and you're like, oh, I don't need to do this because I use panels and stuff like that, just or bodices and stuff like that, just know that you can draw your own panels. You can draw your own bodices. And you can even, it, let's say you drew, you started drawing your bodices and stuff, you can send that to manufacturers and have it, have it made, you know? So you can have panels and bodices that nobody could just, you know, that nobody else could copy and, and have. Like that's a way to kind of be different and stand out from everybody else. I need to copy this. I need to paste this. And I do think like we need to start thinking of ways that we can be different. Actually, I'm not going to copy and paste it. it. It didn't fit too great. And because it's lines, it's kind of hard to make it fit really good. So instead, I'll just keep drawing. But this is not a hard drawing. Like this is just drawing lines. And then I do have to show you guys one last thing. So I'm going to have to um, bring these lace appliques over. I don't know why I made that one so wide. Like, what am I doing? Lord have mercy, I'm tired. I need to eat some dinner. I didn't even eat anything, y'all. What am I doing? I did have some hors d'oeuvres at this event I went to tonight and a few drinks, so I'm not really that hungry, but I am tired. I was up like super early this morning. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab over here and mirror it, or uh, not mirror it, reflect it, or it's not reflect. What am I talking about? I'm, I'm using illustrator terms. I always do that because I kind of forget, um, you know, what it is that I'm doing, um, what, what program, because they're so similar, except this has more control. All right. So remember when I said how those, how um, here, how these change the look of what you've drawn? I'm going to slide this down until I get a look that gives me a completely different look from this side so that I can replace these um, leaves because they're like overlapping in places that I don't want them to. So I just, you know, I'm just sliding this down here. I like this. So I, I, I like it to be super different so that I can really see. So I'm just going to select that. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Sorry, y'all. I was on the wrong layer. So I need to be on the layer that I need to change. So doing this, I'm switching it up. Switching up. I actually need to, I, I like these two coming like that, but I don't want, maybe I'll just erase, erase that. Cause I don't, I don't want, you know, I'm lying. I don't even like that one coming like that either. Well, I feel like I need, I need one of them can't take both of them away because then it's it's nothing there and I don't like that either okay that's cute like as if it's like coming down like a vine or something but these these ones right here they should not be just laying on top of each other the way they had in in, in that dress was like look like a flower almost so I just want to arrange them kind of like leaves on a flower and then I'm gonna grab, I hate that it did that. That's so annoying. Flip it. I want it to look like there's a flower there. And then this one, that one I just did. I just need to arrange it again because they just moved it for some reason. Oh, I'm still on the wrong layer. Just keep selecting the wrong layer. So just moving it around. 
Okay. And then this one, I don't like that it's overlapping, so I'm just going to move it a little bit. That's going to mess up that one, so I actually can't do that. Um, maybe I'll just cut around it. Yeah. I'm going to flip it because I want to not lose that one. I need it. And I want to show you warp again. So I sometimes use the warp tool. Let me move it maybe like here. Sometimes I use the warp tool to change things around a little bit. So I'm pressing the warp tool and I'm just moving it a bit so that it changes the look of the, the leaf. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to, I'm just going to do a little bit and then I'll fill in the rest of that, that edge that got kind of cut off. And then I'm gonna draw a little bit extra. I just like to fill in a little bit. I don't I don't want it to have that much space. So I'm making like little vines. I, I literally draw these all the time, these little vines. I don't know why. It's just my thing. These little vines. So I'm not doing exactly what that other dress had. It was just kind of like inspiration, but not my exact design desires. And then I'm gonna go back to this put it back to normal so now everything looks like it's the same lace whatever I'm gonna bring these two together merge it together bring these two merge them together and now um, this is what our back looks like we have a little bit coming over the edge and I do I do want to fill in a little bit so I'm gonna just take those little pieces that's coming over the edge and oops, I just move them somewhere I don't know where I'm gonna move them I'll put it up here. I'll just erase right there. Okay, that's cool. All right, and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this piece right here because that the halter had some of that lace on it too. Oops, what just happened? All right, just wanna make sure I'm on the right layer. Sometimes that happens. So the halter had some of that lace too. I'm selecting those leaves. I'm gonna press copy, I'm gonna press paste. Now I have the the lace from the oops, the lace from there. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, not a lot, because it, it should be the same, so it shouldn't be too shrunken. And then I'm gonna draw some buttons. Before I draw the buttons, I don't leave my um, outlines black. So let's go back to the skirt outline. Let's select this gray. I'm gonna drop it on the edge there. I didn't catch it, so let's try again. Make sure I'm on the skirt. Skirt, okay. Skirt. Oh, is that 100? So we're not close enough. I mean, we're too close, sorry. Sometimes I don't catch it. Still not close, enough. it's still too close, so I can't see and I don't have enough space to, to change the color like I want to. Lord have mercy, I'm tired, that's what it is. That's what happens. Once I get tired and I start making a little bit of mistakes, but okay, let's see, come on. It's not working for some reason, y'all, I don't know. I might not change the edge. It must not meant be meant to be. It's it's maybe it's because of that reference layer. Hmm. How about this? Let's remove reference. Try again. Yeah, I guess it doesn't care. All right, y'all. I can't change the color tonight, so we're just gonna leave it alone. Wow, it's so interesting that things just decided not to work out on my last night, right? What? What's going on? Um. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna figure that out. But I'm just erasing some of the the edge that kind of went over i like this dress though um i am not gonna draw this again i'm just going to cut it cut it from here copy it and then i'm gonna put it right on that halter and then just erase the excess this is probably the least effective way to do it but I just don't, you know, it's, it is super late, so I don't want to um, take a lot of time to do it. I literally could have just drew that because it's just a few it's a few lines, like whatever. Well, I didn't. It is what it is. Let's put another line here. 
そうですよねはい、okay this is really pretty I'm gonna do the last part which is I'm just gonna make some um some pearl beads I'm not putting hair on her tonight um this is just about the dress but hair could be super simple like in a in this I would usually just do like a bun or something so I'm just gonna make some beads I mean some gotta use the right um the right pen this is the inking I'm gonna use again and I'm gonna use the technical pen I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker because I want the um I want it to to be a filled in pearl so I'm just gonna make a circle I just made a circle I'm gonna fill it in in the center I'm gonna take take the circle I'm gonna make it smaller I meant to say select the circle y'all sorry select the circle I made it smaller and then I'm dropping it here I need to copy that right quick of course it does that so I'm just gonna paste it just leave it I don't know why it gets bigger or, or at, goes back to where it was that's just so weird um do another one. Oh, I forgot it's it's big again we don't need that we just need this oh we're on the wrong layer are we on the wrong layer how'd that happen oh somehow we got on the wrong layer all right back to this layer that's my little pearl little pearl buttons same deal fill it here now we have two pearls i'm not gonna um do that again instead i'm just going to select the two pearls i'm gonna copy the two pearls i'm gonna paste the two pearls and now we've got a total of four i'm gonna bring all those pearls together i'm gonna merge them down um and now i'm gonna show you something that i should have done first i always forget to do this so first i'm going to I'm gonna, oops First, I'm going to copy all the pearls. Then I'm going to change the color. You know what? Just know that if this doesn't work, something's up. All right. So I'm going to take that gray. I'm going to drop it on these pearls. All right. All of them are gray, right? Then I'm going to paste the pearls right on top. And then I kind of offset it a little bit so that you can see them. And I'm so glad that it did work. So now we got the little pearls. And let's get rid of, was it this one? Yeah, that was, it was this one. So let's just delete the whole layer. Okay. So we drew this whole dress. We drew this whole dress. Um, let me tell you one thing I would do different with this one. I would probably make this part of the skirt. In fact, I'll show you real quick. I'll probably make this part of the skirt also um, somewhat transparent. The only thing is, since it's on a, you know, since we have it on these two separate layers and this one is super sheer. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you. But anyway, since it's super, I'm actually not going to do it then. But since it's super sheer, I don't, I don't want this to be the same. So I might have made three layers and made the top layer sheer like this. And then this layer, like somewhat more opaque. And then the last layer is the really um, solid, you know, layer. But I want to fill in because you could see her legs. So I'm just going to show you a really simple way to do that. I'm on the croquis layer. I'm pressing plus. Um, I'm going to select, is it this one? Uh, this might be her color. I'm just checking. Nope, that's not her color. Um, is it this one? I kind of can't tell. Nope. I can't tell. I feel like my eyes ain't working properly right now. This is her? Yep, that's it. Okay. All right. So actually all I do is i just fill in everywhere that it's that you can see through so you'll see in a second what it looks like i can even make that bigger i don't just need to be that small but i just fill in everywhere that you can see through a bit and now this is basically like if it was lined with her skin tone um but not specifically skin tone mesh more like maybe lined with so like maybe her lining, the, the lining that's almost closest to her skin is her skin color or brownish color. And then the next layer is maybe the off-white. And then the next layer is the, um, that beaded. So this is, this would be like a, a beaded, like lines of beads. And then this the lace on top. I hope that makes sense. Okay. This is beautiful though. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Yes. And actually, 
I would put pearls down here too. So I made it a zipper, but actually I would put pearls down this too. I'm a, I'm a, um, a pearl, like pearl buttons. I'm a pearl button kind of person. Um, I like lace ups too, but sometimes there's nothing more elegant to me than, um, pearls. Like the lacing is great cause it can snatch, you know, but if you're not trying to snatch, which who isn't trying to snatch, but if you're not trying to snatch, um, I love a beautiful, elegant, elegant, um, pearl or satin or taffeta or whatever button, you know, same color as the dress. But this is beautiful. Tell me what y'all think. Um, I love it. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I think it came out really beautiful. Um, if this was, you know, if me, if I was really trying to copy that dress, I would probably use the sequin. Um, I would make sequin here. Um, but like I said, the only thing I would really change about this is to add the pearls. I'm, I'm okay with it being like this. Um, that's just me. That's my style. Anyway, like I said, um, the three for 300, um, private sketch sessions, those are going away by tomorrow evening. Um, at midnight or actually well yeah at midnight because we're almost close to midnight anyway um, those are going away by tomorrow night at midnight my private sessions single sessions are 150 now those are perfect for people who just want to learn something real quick they just want to um you know maybe you feel like you don't need three sessions but I'm suggesting um at you know if each session is 150 if I'm giving you three for uh, uh for 300 that means you're getting um two sessions sorry three sessions for the price of two that you really can't beat that um i don't know when my next class is going to be um if you want to continue to follow me you can check out my um bridal design page that's at by danny simone studio on instagram i also have um my illustration slash bridal education slash my life type page um, my life as a designer type page, which is at by Danny Simone. So check me out there, but please jump on these three sessions. Um, and don't judge, you know, the mess ups this night, tonight. I don't know what happened, but regardless, this dress came out beautiful. I am super pleased with it. And just imagine if you could create beautiful sketches like this for your clients, um, you can do like what I do when I close sales with just a sketch. I ain't sold a single thing. All I'm showing you is this sketch and sometimes not even swatches, you know, sometimes I'm not even showing them swatches. So they're really just believing and trusting in me because I have made it my life's work to perfect um, illustration. I did it first with um, Illustrator. Well, I first did it with, by hand. OK, and then um, I decided that I wanted to learn Illustrator um, and that helped me in my career. And then for my bridal brand, I have always used illustrations in my sketches. Um, pencil sketches, illustrator sketches, and now Procreate. And I can tell you right now, Procreate has changed my business. It has made things so different for me. So I think at three sessions for 300 or one session for 150, whatever works for you, it's definitely a skill. And this is going to be a skill you can use for the rest of your life. So the last thing I want to sh show you guys is some of my um, sketches, just so you can see the growth. Okay. So, all right. So what we're going to do is go back, way back. That's actually something I'm working on. That That's why I said maybe you should follow me if you, you're interested in learning. Um, here we go. All right. So is it... Sorry, I'm just looking for the right, uh, the right thing. Not this one. Um, here we go. I think it's favorites. I think it's favorites. All right, so I want to just start and just show you how I started with um, Procreate. Um, I also, before I even show you that, I'm going to show you a pencil sketch. Just so you know that, I, like I said, I actually do know how to sketch. Um, I've been sketching for years. Where is my, I don't even know where it is right now. That's ridiculous. I've been doing a lot of stuff in my studio and things are moving around, so I don't even know. Um, oh, here it is. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. That was not the goal. All right, so this is just one of my um, pencil sketches. Um, I just wanted you guys to see that. If you notice, I have a style. So I've been drawing in this style for many, many years and I've been perfecting that style and I love it. Um, that dress right there took me about three hours of hand sketching. This one right here, this was about maybe an hour and a half of hand sketching and I was trying something new with the name up here um, and just kind of make it a little bit more bold and dramatic. Um, and then this one, this is the last pencil sketch I'm going to show you. This one right here was probably like 
I want to say a good six hours of work. I think I said before it was like three hours, but then I went back and watched some of my old videos and um, this was about six hours. The reason is because of all that shadow, um, drawing the lace by hand, trying to make sure it matches. And you can't see, but I erased a lot on this. This was a lot of work. Now, if I do this in Procreate, it's about, I want to say about not half the time, maybe, maybe two hours of work. But that two hours of work I can use to make multiple sketches over and over again. So this is the first Procreate sketch that I created. This was for my client. She bought the dress. But like I said, I did not love this. I felt like crap about it, honestly. Here's um, another one. I was just playing around, just trying to see if I could figure it out. Still didn't love it. And then this was when I did... Let me just look at the date. So this was September 29th. Okay, so this was July 27, 2021, September 29th, um, 2021. And then this one here is um, October. So this is when I started feeling better about things. Um, eh, still wasn't too happy and everything. Still wasn't too happy. I love this dress and I'm going to make this dress. This is supposed to be velvet. It has sheer sleeves like chiffon sleeves and this is sequins. And it is sequin all down here. I'm sorry. I love this dress and I am making this dress. And then I started getting better. And this was for a client. You might have seen um, this dress, um, sketches of this dress before, but she absolutely loved this. And I actually started out working with her making that first dress, um, that first dress sketch. How did I do it? Uh, oh, by pencil. It was a pencil sketch. It was different than this. It was always going to be a black dress, but it was different than this. But that first one, I didn't love it. And when I started sketching with Procreate, I absolutely fell in love. So I'm going to go through these real quick. As you can see, things changed. The growth, you know, like I started getting better and better and better. So I, I would try different techniques. I would practice all the time. I love this one too. And I'm, I'm all about that. Take, take away a piece, detachable, whatever. So I just start getting better and better. I started feeling myself. I started posting all the time. Um... This was from, this is Encanto. This is I Isabella. Isabella? Yeah, this is Isabella. And I felt so good about that. Um, some dresses, I don't love how they came out. And some, I absolutely love. So it's like, even looking back now, I'm like, oh, I can make a new remake of that one. I can redraw that one again. This is when I really was falling in love. Like, I really love this. And my shading wasn't even all that. Also tonight, I didn't shade. It, this went super long, but still. Like, I was just falling in love and starting to love things more. This was an order for a bridal shop. So I started working with bridal shops and drawing um, their new collections. So this was for a plus-size bridal shop. I do that. I did want that one a, f a few different times because you're going to see it again. See, that's another version of that one. This is um, that bridal shop again. More bridal shop. That's another version of the peach one. This one I loved too. I have no idea how she would walk in this, but I just, I wanted to try out a technique. So I did it. And I, like I said, this one I was really loving. Like that lace took forever, but it was so beautiful. So as you can see, things just started changing. This is another bridal shop. This one I really love too. I don't know if I'll ever make it, but I really love it. And then I wanted to play around with two different skirts. So I had already drawn this skirt. I don't know if you remember, I just showed it to you. And then I put it on this dress. So you can change things up so much. This dress, I just showed it to you. In fact, let me show you one more time. So here's this version. Here's this version. It's the same dress. I just changed the colors and changed um, the embellishments. That's what you can learn. Like I can show you how to do that and build up your own library. And you can be showing these to your clients and they could be saying yes to the sketch and working with you just because you sketched beautifully. So I want you to keep that in mind. Like the sky is the limit when you learn how to use Procreate for your business. So yeah, why why are you still watching? Like click, get, get them sessions, girl. Like, come on, let's go get them sessions. Yes, like you see, it's just getting better and better and better, better and better. Like, look at that, two separate um, options, you know? I, sh I show this to clients. I've sh This is a dress I've already made. I've shown to clients different versions and they have bought these versions because I have shown them this is what else I can do for you, you know? So just keep that in mind. So many options, so many things you can show people. This was me just playing around and trying to do um, a different style of sketch, just more of a rough sketch. People have loved this. I share this on social media. People absolutely have loved this. I had a bridal shop reaching out to me talk about when are you going to make this dress? I want to put it in my shop. Okay. Yes. Oh, and no, I didn't work with them because their price was too low. Mm -mm. But still, that's big. 
you know? So, yeah, I love this dress right here, y'all. Like, I love it. I really do. That's my logo. But, yeah, so this is just me. I love this dress, too. I'm making this one. This is going to be my spring 2024. No, sorry, spring 2025. But, yeah, so this is me just letting you know this was for a client. This is me just showing her all these different options. She ended up going with this. But and then I turned that dress into this. I was inspired and I said, oh, I want to see it like this. So I did that. So you can do that. That's like a background. I put it with this dress, actually, because I wanted to show a client. This is what this could look like and give her a feel. You can do that, too. I can show you how to do it. So I just have so much fun. This was um, Angela Bassett's. I think it, when she went to the Academy Award and she was robbed. OK, but this was her dress. I just wanted to draw it. So I did. I love this one, too. Look at that. And I actually showed just a second ago a different version of that. So this one is in here like a million times. I love this dress. I love this dress. I've shown different versions of this. This is my boo right here. I love this dress. I'm sorry. I love it. I don't even care. I love this one too. This is when I was doing the Barbie thing. Oh, I love this. This is um my version of one of the Beyonce Renaissance dresses. I went twice to see her. Okay. But anyway, this is one of the Beyonce Renaissance. Um, It was a jumpsuit and I turned it into a dress. And I just, I just love it. I'm sorry. I just love it. And then this is, I don't even know why it's there. But that's that croaky you guys have. And this is another one. I love it. This is another um Beyonce Renaissance. Like I was kind of going in and drawing a bunch of Beyonce stuff. Oh, this is, you know, oh. This is something you might want to know, just in case if you were just watching tonight and you don't know if um, Procreate works for you. Um, this is the different sizes and iPads that are compatible with the Procreate. So we just going to stop tonight because y'all getting to see all my business. But thank you so much for watching. Um, definitely hit me up if you have any questions about those sessions. Um, but I am definitely excited to work with you and please enjoy this last free class. Check out the other two free classes. Check out the two free templates I gave, uh, sorry, croquis I gave you and the templates I gave you. I'm going to give you more than two templates, but it's been a pleasure. Um, and I will see you guys really soon. Have a beautiful night.